Hello and welcome to the last segment on matrices. Today we shall be beginning this segment by the elementary row and column operations in a matrix or a determinant. Later we shall be solving linear equations in order to obtain the result that would give us whether the given set of equations are consistent or not. And finally we shall deal with a problem in which we will be finding the solution of a linear equation by the use of inverse of a matrix. Beginning with the elementary row and column operation in a matrix or a determinant, the first operation that can be performed in a row or a column of a given matrix or a determinant is the operation of interchanging the ith row and the jth row of a given matrix A and it will be denoted Ri gets the value of Rj and Rj gets the value of Ri where Ri denotes the ith row and Rj denotes the jth column. Sim in similar way the for a column operation in which we interchange the ith column with the jth column it would be denoted by Ci gets the value of Cj and Cj gets the value of Ci as shown in the text. The next operation involves multiplying of ith row by a number k and it will be denoted by ri gets the value of k ri where ri is the ith row and k denotes the number. In similar way while multiplying ith column by a number k it will be denoted by ci gets the value of k ci where ci is the ith column and k denotes the number. According to the next operation the operation of adding each element of i row k times the j row will be denoted by ri gets the value of ri plus k rj where ri is again the i row elements and rj denotes the j row elements and k is a constant or a number. In similar way for a column in which we add each element of i column k times the jth column it will be denoted by ci gets the value of ci plus k cj where ci is the ith column cj is the jth column and k is a number in this way by performing these elementary rows and column operation we can obtain the values of a determinant or a matrix in a much convenient way next we would be discussing how to solve a given linear set of equations and how to find whether the given set of equations are consistent or not. For this we suppose let Ax equal to B be a matrix equation of a system of n linear equations in n unknown. In particular if A is non-singular that is determinant of A is not equal to 0 then the system has a unique solution and its value is given as x equal to a inverse of b and this solution is unique. Next we are going to discuss the criteria for consistency or inconsistency of given set of linear equations. The first condition states that if determinant of a is not equal to 0 then the system is consistent and its solution is unique and its value is given as x equal to a inverse of b. In the next condition if determinant of a is equal to 0 then the given set of equations is consistent and has infinite solution provided the product of adjoint of a and b must be a null matrix. In the next condition if determinant value of a is 0 and the product of adjoint of A and B is not equal to null matrix then the given set of equations is inconsistent. In this way by determining the determinant value of a given matrix and the product of adjoint of A and B we can find out whether the given set of equations are consistent or not. Finally we are going to deal with the problem that would be using matrix method to solve a set of given linear equations which are 4x minus 3y equal to 11 and 3x plus 7y equal to minus 1. The given set of equations are equivalent to the three matrices shown which are of the form ax equal to 
B where A is equal to a matrix whose elements are 4, minus 3, 3 and 7. X is a matrix containing X and Y and B is a matrix containing 11 and minus 1 as its element. Determine the value of the given set of equation. The first thing to be done is to find out the value of the determinant of A which is given as A equal to the determinant of 4 minus 3, 3 and 7. Its value is obtained by cross multiplying which is as 28 plus 9 which gives us a value of 37 and it does not equal to 0. That means the given matrix is non-singular and the system has a unique solution whose value is given as x equal to a inverse of b. Now in order to find out the value of x, first we need to find out the value of a inverse. Now a inverse is found by use of the formula that we have discussed in the earlier segments of matrices which is equal to 1 divided by the determinant of A and its product with adjoint of A. Now adjoint of A is obtained by the use of cofactors of matrix A and then obtaining the transpose of the matrix. Thus A inverse is obtained as 1 divided by 37 into adjoint of A whose value is 7, 3, minus 3 and 4. Now in order to find out the value or the unique solution to this given set of equation, we need to find out the value of X. Thus X can be written as the product of two matrices which are A inverse and B. So X gets the product of A inverse which is 7 by 37, 3 by 37, minus 3 by 37 and 4 by 37 multiplied by the matrix B whose elements are 11 and minus 1. Now by the use of matrix multiplication that we have discussed earlier in the previous sections of matrices we have matrix X as whose elements are described as X and Y equal to a matrix whose elements are 74 by 37 and minus 37 by 37 this gives us the value of X and Y as 2 and minus 1 respectively. This means that the given set of linear equations are consistent since the determinant value of A is not equal to 0 and thus the matrix A is non-singular and therefore the system has a unique solution which is given by the matrix X. With this we conclude the chapter on matrices.